Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid-back yet very inspiring conversations with other full-time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists that it is completely possible to have a great career in the arts. And if you ever want to tune in and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just check out the schedule over at facebook.com slash groups slash artist academy every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you there. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly (laughs) and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. Hello, painters, creators, makers, (laughs) podcast listeners. Today is day one of my back in the office, back in the studio. Uh, We just flew in last night. from Antarctica. (laughs) So we just took off the last month of our lives to go and get married in Aruba and then go explore a lot of South America and have a honeymoon in Antarctica. So today is day one and this is actually the fourth time I'm pressing play to record this because the first three (laughs) three attempts I uh, tried to talk for a couple minutes and they were just gibberish. It was not good so I was like nope trying it again but I am committed this time. Number four is the charm. (laughs) So But before we get into talking about this week's theme of networking, which will be mentioned throughout this whole uh, episode, I just want to talk a little bit about life because it correlates with what I'm going to talk about today and just how life and business and how it's all just coming together here recently and how what I'm doing with my business affects what I am able to do with my life and just all the things like such getting married in Aruba and having an extravagant honeymoon in Antarctica. It was actually our seventh continent together. Um, I've been to about 40 countries. Ryan, he, he wanted me to note that he has been to, I think it was 15 countries. He, he wanted me to make sure to put that in. <laughs> and we got to explore our seventh continent together. And so I thought that was super special. And I just wanted to talk about like how we were able to do that in maybe the first five minutes of this episode and then we'll get into the why and how of networking and how it can benefit you and how you can do it and just the whole spiel. This morning (laughs) on our first day back on the job back in the office uh, Ryan and I woke up at about nine (laughs) o'clock and then we hung out around the house and then did a couple things and grocery shopping all that fun stuff getting life back together and then we went to the office. He went to the office. Uh, I went into my studio room where I am now. It is five o'clock as I am recording this. And I just wanted to note that because we both work for ourselves, which is why taking off for the last month was possible and why this Monday isn't such a bad Monday, even though it's the first day back on the job and I'm kind of just trying to get through this podcast so that it can air tomorrow. (laughs) Um, It's not too bad. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about how we were able to take off for a month and explore our seventh continent, which is crazy, Um, just because I'm 30, he's 35, and I, I did not think that I would achieve this quite so soon. So, I just, yeah, (laughs) I just want to talk about why that's possible. Um, So, first off, we work for ourselves. 
And if you're an artist listening and you have to clock into a job that maybe you don't love, I hope this is inspiration for you first off. And I think networking, which is the theme of this episode, is a key way that you can have a similar life if that's what you want. If you don't want that, whatever. If you just want to like, you know, make crafts and you're just here to, you know, sell a bit more crafts. So like, that's totally fine too. However, I am a big dreamer. Obviously, I went to my seventh continent. And so I'm going to talk to you as if you are a big dreamer as well. Okay, so I just want to talk about a little bit. Um, Aruba was perfect. We got married in Aruba, and we brought 50 of our closest friends and family <laughs> down to Aruba. We had nine bridesmaids and groomsmen. So I had nine, and he had nine. I think we invited about 10, and nine were able to make it. So I think that was super cool. And I just want to talk about that really quick, because that does correlate to this whole networking theme into just knowing a lot of people. Like Ryan and I, we know a lot of people. Ryan, my husband, my husband, my <laughs> my husband, I'm still getting used to saying that. Um, he went from roommate for two years, fun fact, to dating for a year, to engaged for a year and a half, and now we are married. So we were actually roommates and friends right before we were anything crazy. And then I got drunk one night and kissed him. But <laughs> that, aside from that, now we're here and we're married. So I just want to talk a little bit about that. We brought 50 people down to Aruba. And that's kind of a lot for, for a destination wedding. And people, when we were even when we were down there, they were like, whoa, 50? That's quite a bit. People kept telling us that. And I just want to say that, you know, we had nine people on our side, on each side of nine of our closest friends. And a lot of my bridesmaids, like we were close at some point in life and have stayed in touch. Like I don't have like nine best friends right now that I talk to every single day. That's not it. A lot of people, a lot of them have moved away. And, but at one point we were super, super close and we, we met through networking, <laughs> like all of them almost. Um, a couple of them I went to high school with and some of them here and there, but most of them it's through networking and going out and meeting people. And Ryan as well, we know a lot of people. And so just with knowing a lot of people comes a lot of recommendations for businesses. Now I am not saying go out and have nine bridesmaids and groomsmen um, with, with that intent in order to better your business. <laughs> I'm not saying that, although I say it is kind of a cause and effect of knowing a lot of people people versus getting a lot of recommendations and having a lot of people wanting to show up to your wedding. <laughs> so um, I'll talk more on that a, a little bit later, but we actually booked the honeymoon before we booked the wedding. So I'll explain just a bit. So Ryan and I were talking and I was like, you know, I've always wanted to go to Antarctica. I don't know. I'm going to do it someday. It's kind of expensive. Like, do you want to do like a honeymoon destination? He's like, yeah, sure. Like that was, that was it. It didn't, it took no more talking him into it than that. He was like, yeah, sure. Um, so we booked it a year and a half ago. And when we booked it, we were, we took the last two spots on the ship or the last two, there were two and we took one of them. And so people, everybody else on our ship, the majority booked over two years ago or so. And which was crazy because we booked a year and a half and we're like, that's a long time. (laughs) So we planned our wedding around our honeymoon. (laughs) So we planned that a week ahead of time uh, just to give us plenty of time to get down to South America and fly out and all of that stuff. Um, But I want to talk about that real quick. So booking something out a year and a half in advance, an extravagant honeymoon like that, because it is pricey. I think, I mean, just to be super transparent, we paid about 16 grand each, or not each, sorry, together just for the cruise part of the Antarctica thing. And it was like a 10-day all-inclusive kind of a thing. And it was amazing. Like, Antarctica is amazing. I don't know what I expected, but it was just beyond any expectation that I had. Like, the wildlife, the animals. I think we saw maybe on average like an like 80 whales from the time we got there to the time we left, um, whether they're far away or close up. Um, a mink whale came up to the boat and splashed us and or splashed bubbles on us. There we saw thousands of penguins. Uh, seals, like one seal, a, a leopard seal came up and like tried to like kind of bite-ish like gnaw on our, our boat, <laughs> our, our little uh inner tube zodiac kind of a thing like animals were up close and personal um like penguins would come up and like nip at you to see if you were food like it was just the most one of just 
it was amazing. I don't really know how to say it other than that. It was amazing. And it was just the best honeymoon that I could have ever hoped for. And so, yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about that. So anyway, we had to book that kind of blindly, not really knowing what to expect about a year and a half out. And for any artist who is running your own business, like things are feast or famine, just to be honest. And to talk to any veteran artist, they'll usually tell you the same. It's feast or famine. Like business will be really good and then business will be slow and then business will be, it's like construction. It's the same thing. And so for me to book something that expensive, um, I mean, we spent about 20 grand in total with flights and everything on a honeymoon (laughs) and I helped and I split that with him. And so just to book something that far out, like hoping that your business will still be afloat in a year and a half, it takes, you know, it takes some confidence and really it motivated me because I mean, Ryan's business is set up. He's been in it for over 10 years. And if you talk to anybody who's been in their business for over 10 years and who usually works with works for themselves and you know, is they're usually doing well. Like that 10 year mark is that mark where people are just like, yeah, things just kind of flow to me, like things happen. But it took, I mean, it took him years, especially in the beginning to get that started. So for me, I'm in year seven now. And that time I was at year like five. And so halfway there, still kind of trying to figure things out. And I was just like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, what did I just book? You know? (laughs) So what happened was it motivated me. And call it some kind of vibe that I put out or something, but things just started to come to me. Once I was like, okay, I booked this, give me all the work, like I'm ready to be a workaholic. Like, and things just started to come to me. And it's, I don't know what you believe in, universe, God, you know, if you go to church, if you do what, whatever, you know, but I'm all about the what you put out, you get back. And the vibe that you put out, it's just the things start coming to you. And that's really what happened. And it was just kind of crazy. I mean, I wasn't, like, business wasn't dead before that. But, like, the minute we started, we booked, and I put that deposit down on this Antarctic vacation, like, I got some big jobs. And I was like, whoa. Like, okay, that's cool. And then things just started to come and started to come more and more. And I've been busy for the past year and a half. Like, I don't know where the last year and a half went, but now I'm married. So it went by super quick. So yeah, it, it motivated me. And then being on the ship. So it was a, sorry if I'm not super clear on this, but it was an Antarctic cruise. We flew down to Punta Arenas and then we flew out from Punta Arenas which is literally southern Chile, and flew to, flew over the Drake Passage, which took about two hours, to Antarctica. And then we got on a ship, and we cruised around the ship for about eight days, and then we got off, and blah, blah, blah. And then we made our way back through Santiago and all that. So, yesterday. This happened yesterday. Like, I just got back. And so, I just want to talk a little bit about how, like, being on the ship motivated me. You know, I forget how much travel and just networking with people again there's that word networking (laughs) networking with people um who are just who just dream big i forget how how much that can do for just your brain and your business and just all of that speaking of while i was on the ship uh we met several very like-minded people And I want to emphasize this. This is something that I knew would kind of happen, but I didn't know the extent of it. From traveling, like, all over, like, to especially through Thailand, like, you just meet people who are backpacking and stuff and are just, they're they're in it with you. And it's a very similar state of curiosity and exploration and just, like, all of this stuff. And that's what happened uh, on our ship in, in Antarctica. This was actually a traveling trip unlike anything I'd ever experienced because Ryan and I were the youngest couple on the ship. Now, there were three children, but we were the youngest couple on the ship. So there were about three couples, including us, that were in their 30s, and about three couples maybe in their 40s, and two of those brought their children, which had a median age of like eight, uh, which I thought was super cool. They traveled with their kids. The kids were great. Like we got to, we mingled with them and we became friends with them and they were just so cool. Anyway, and so the rest were 50s, 60s, 70s, because, you know, as I, as I said, like a 20 grand vacation like this in a week, like it takes some money. And a lot of people, especially newlyweds, don't have that money. And so, I mean, when you're older and a lot of the people that we met were business owners 
and people who ran marathons. Uh, Ryan is actually training right now for a half Ironman in Hawaii in two months from now, which is, if you don't know what what an Ironman is, it's like crazy. It's an Ironman is you swim a couple miles. (laughs) I I don't know exactly. You bike for like 80 miles and then you run a marathon. So Ryan's doing a half marathon. So he, or sorry, a half Ironman. So he's swimming for, I think it's a mile, biking for 40 miles and then running a half marathon, which is like 13 miles, I think. So, which is still crazy. And so he was talking about training for that. And then like on the boat and like, as he was talking about that, like um, a passenger was like, oh, I've done that. I've done five of those. And we're just like, five huh (laughs) like what yeah this this passenger he was actually um, the dad of the one who brought the kids and we so we talked to him about it he's like yeah I've done five and his wife had done five and how cool is that and then one of the guides so when you're on the ship you have guides expedition leaders who are just badasses sorry if they're kids (laughs) listening but they are just the coolest people I've ever met And so these expedition leaders and one of the expedition leaders said, oh yeah, I've done six of those, the full ones. So the full Ironmans, like this guy had done six full Ironmans and we're just like, what? And as we were talking to more and more people at dinner and stuff on the ship, a lot of, a lot of other people were like, oh yeah, I've done a marathon. Oh yeah, I've done an Ironman, like all this stuff. And oh yeah, I've been to 50 countries, a hundred countries. One one of the guys had been to like 143 countries. I'm pretty sure that was the number. And you just meet like-minded people and it just motivates you. Like I come, I'm coming back and I'm going to go running later today (laughs) because I just, I'm now motivated to run another half marathon just by being around those people. So just by networking with those people and just people who just want more out of life. And even though a lot of them were older, I mean, back in their day, I mean, they would still talk about doing marathons and like owning businesses and like the trips that they've taken to like Egypt and Africa, like everywhere. And it was so motivating. And so I just wanted to point that out. But that's kind of a little, little side benefit of networking is just motivating and just surrounding yourself with like-minded people and whenever I'm home for too long when I'm here in Missouri too long and I'm working you know I'm hanging out with the same people and like a lot of the people that I know they don't want to go run a half marathon they don't want to build their business to six figures or seven figures and so you kind of just get in this like average mentality you know and I'm say this in the absolute best way because people who want to be average I'm that sounds bad, but people who want to be simple, I guess you could say, and have a simple life full of love and just simple things, like a lot of people like that. I am not like that. I go crazy if I get too much like that. And so traveling for me is just a chance for me to like open my mind back up to what else is possible around like in business and life and all the things. So I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. So let me bring it back. <laughs> so I just want to say, like, just being out there motivated me. And when I when I was on the ship, I met the photographer of the ship, who is just one of the coolest people ever. Him and Ryan are best friends. Literally, him and Ryan are the same person. So if you know my hus- husband, husband, Ryan, I'm still getting used to the word husband. If you know my husband, Ryan, imagine him times two. And that is the photographer of the ship. So we were talking to him and we were networking and I was like, yeah, like I'm always looking for reference photos. And he was showing me his photos from all around the world and just wildlife photos mostly. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love your photos. You know, if, you know, if you ever want to license them, he's like, oh no, you can use them. I was like, are you sure? Like, he's like, oh yeah. Like, cause we were, cause we were friends. We, we had networked, we met each other. I'd see, he'd seen some of my work. He was like, I would be honored if you would use my photos. And I was like, okay, well in turn, uh, you get pick of any print that you want. I'll ship it to you. He's like, done. So that's another benefit that networking can give you. You can meet a badass photographer in Antarctica and he can, he can tell you that you can, that you can have full reign of his reference photos. So that's, I mean, that's an extreme case, but still you never know. Like I didn't know who this guy was that sat down with us at dinner. I didn't know that he was a photographer and had been all over the world. And so, yeah. Also on that note, one thing for all our Artist Academy members, I was inspired by this little thing. So I have a lot of reference photos from all around the world, mostly landscape and wildlife. 
And I was thinking about putting them together in like a reference photo bank type of thing for Artist Academy members. That way you guys can use them for absolutely free. I have a lot of pictures of super cute penguins. <laughs> if anybody wants to use them, seals, whales, all that stuff. Um, also landscapes from New Zealand and just all the places I've been. So I was thinking about putting together like a bank full of reference photos for you guys to use for free as like included in your Artist Academy fee, um, which right now is just $27 a month if anybody doesn't know plug right there and which is nothing and so if you want that let me know but if you don't want that don't say anything because then I'm not going to do it so I don't want to put a lot of time into compiling all the photos that I have throughout my trips landscape wildlife for you to use them if you're not going to use them so let me know if you want that and really if one person messages me and saying that they want that then I'll do it and I'll probably have it to you within the next week for reference photos because I was thinking I was like man like also, I was thinking about maybe adding on to that and com- and like compiling reference photos from these are these photographers that I met, like the photographer that I met on the Antarctic cruise ship and other photographers and thinking if I could compile a bank of reference photos from those people as well for Artist Academy. So that's just another thing that's kind of an idea that's floating around in my head. It's not just have mine, but have other photographers and just like have them free for you guys to use in exchange for you to tag them and everything that you post if you if you use it and just to work a deal like that out. Let me know if you want that. Let me know if you want free reference photos. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. So, let me know. Okay. You cannot network enough. And do you know who that's a quote from? Rich Marks. He is episode 59. I think the episode is titled something like the power of practice and networking. So this is basically just an elaboration on a lot of the stuff that he said. Rich Marks is a accomplished muralist and go listen to 59 if you want to get to know him, but he just talks about the power of networking. And I'm just going to elaborate on it because he mentioned, you know, like the more that he has reached out to artists, the more jobs that he gets through those artists, the more artists that he has help on his projects, they in turn hire them back him back. And so that's another just benefit of networking. And this week's Artist Academy assignment is to reach out to an artist in your area. So every Monday, I send a new tutorial or a new assignment or something to my students that will help them advance their career in some way whether it's like a painting tutorial that'll like help paintings you know look more realistic or like business tips and this week is a nudge to network so why should you network okay here's another very relatable of example from the cruise ship that I was just on the Antarctic cruise ship and when I was talking to a lot of the expedition leaders, these are people who are just masters in their field of biologists, geologists, historians, uh, people with PhDs, basically, that are hired onto this cruise ship that have, they're, they're just awesome. And they have the best job, you know, they get paid a pretty good amount to come and educate uh, people like me who are on their honeymoon <laughs> on Uh, on a cruise or on vacation and they're getting paid to go explore Antarctica and to know a whole lot about that area and I was just talking to them and like how do you end up getting this job and one of the uh one of the expedition leaders mentioned he was like yeah well um Aurora which is the um I guess you could say the cruise ship liner um, main hub, the person who hires, anyway, um, they're like Aurora Expeditions, they get, I mean, like, hundreds of applications a year, but they, they only hire people who recommend people, that's it, so there's, there's that, uh, that quote, what is it, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know, (laughs) That's not always the case. Nothing is 100% of the time. However, I've gotten job opportunities from who I know, like at Bass Pro. Like I got hired because I knew someone and they recommended me. Like that's how I got hired. And so they mentioned also for the cruise ship, like to have an awesome job like that, like people are applying. But if you don't know someone who's currently working, who isn't there when they're like, hey, um, we need a historian for for this job. this sailing because this guy's going home like does does anybody know a guy if someone doesn't raise their hand and recommend you you're probably not getting the job 
So that's just another like why networking is so important. So let's see. Okay, another thing, another point I have on here is one of the hopes that I have for you in to showing you how to network and, you know, giving you some tips on how to approach people and all that is for you to meet a connector. And when I say connector, I don't know if that's like the right term for that, but like this is what I call it. A connector is someone who basically knows a lot of people and that can connect you with opportunities or other people. So I am a connector. I know a lot of people. I connect a lot of people. And if you know someone in Springfield, we probably have a connection through somewhere. Like we are, I am a connector. I like, I I have nine bridesmaids that came. Like I know a lot of people and I like, I like networking, like especially back in the day. Like I don't do it as much as I did in my mid twenties, but from networking so much in my mid twenties, I now know a lot of people. And Ryan is a connector as well. My husband, husband, (laughs) he is a connector. He knows a lot of people mainly because he grew up here. Like, and he, he is so social. He is one of the most social person people I know. He's a connector as well. So with the two of us together, that's powerful just for business reasons as well. But also we get invited to a lot of dinner parties <laughs> like, and a lot of double dates. Everybody's like, let's do a double date with you. Let's do it. like people we barely know. I'm like, okay, maybe. <laughs> like, so, but it can, it can benefit a lot with, in business. And I think us being connectors and us being very social is one of the reasons that both of our businesses are doing so well. It's because if you have a really good product, if nobody knows about it, then ugh, it's hard, it's just harder to get business. However, if you have a pretty good product and a lot of people know about you and a lot of people will, will recommend you and you're a good person, that's another thing to throw in there, then your business is going to do well. So uh, one of the benefits of networking, so if you are one of those people where you're like, well, great for you, Andrea, you you partied when you were in your 20s and you know a lot of people, which is actually true, that's actually how I met a lot of people, was just having a lot of fun in my 20s and knowing a lot of business owners. And so but if you're like, good for you, like I settled down early, I have kids now, like I don't know a ton of people other than my neighbors, um, nope, no big deal. I'm going to show you how to network, how to get your name out there, and just kind of think, like, I know a lot of people, including myself, especially lately, like, you just, you're like, ah, oh, let's go out and meet more people, yay. Like, I would much rather stay in my studio and just paint all day, every day, by myself, introverts, <laughs> this is the introvert club, um, if you're like, I really don't want to go out and meet a ton of people and, you know, have to do the whole thing. It's okay. You don't have to, you just need to meet a connector. And so that's my hope for you is for you to reach out to people and hopefully you'll meet a connector. And so I want to give, I think I've given this example before, maybe, I don't know, but I'm going to give two. And these are two very personal uh, examples because they happen to me. And it was about a year ago. So I'm just going to highlight two of my now Artist Academy students, Meg Wagler and Christy Martin, two women who I adore. And I'm just going to highlight how I met them. So Meg reached out to me on Instagram. And uh, now she's an Artist Academy member. Now we've worked together several times. uh, But that started by her um, just reaching out and being like, hey, basically saying, hey, I love your art. I love your Instagram page. Um, I want to meet you. (laughs) And she didn't just say that. She didn't ask me to buy, ask to buy a coffee for me or something, which you can do. But when people message me and they're like, hey, I'd love to pick your brain. I'm like, yeah, you and all these other people. (laughs) No, I'm like, that's why I created a podcast. Go listen to it. That's usually what I tell people. However, when Meg reached out, she was like, hey, um, I'd love to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And then I think she reached out a second time because I was like, yeah, sure. I, yeah, I I like you too. Yeah, or, I like your art because I checked out her page. But then she reached out a second time and was like, hey, I'm about to go to this art event that you might be interested in. Uh, if you want to go, I'll be there and, you know, we can hang out if you want and just kind of kind of network. And I was like, hmm that's a good idea. You know, uh, this artist who I, I like her art, uh, she's giving me an opportunity to go out and network. She's not asking me to go one-on-one, you know, 
And that's something that I want people to kind of maybe try to get away from if, if you're wanting to pick someone's brain, like maybe be like, hey, come to this event. Um, hey, come do this. Like something, like come to an arts fair, come to this museum opening, come to the, like try that approach other than, hey, let's meet one-on-one -on -one for coffee. Like think about ways that it can be, can be beneficial to the person you're reaching out to, which I'm hoping is an artist in your area. So yeah, so that's what she did to me. And so I went out and I met her and it was great. Like we talked for about an hour. I met a couple other people. She introduced me to this other organization here in town, which I can't remember the name of it, <laughs> but um, you just, you never know. You, and you meet people and there was one girl there who was a writer and I was like, oh, I'm, I might need you. Anyway, anyway, so long story short. And then she reached out again after we had met and was like, hey, you know, I would, I want to kind of maybe job shadow you basically because she was wanting to go full, be a full-time muralist. Um, she had a job in the arts, so a good job, and she wanted to go and be a muralist. So she was like, hey, can I come job shadow you for a day? And I was like, actually, yes, because I'm starting this thing called the Artist Academy. This was about a year ago, and I really need to make some video. And if you have a bunch of questions, and I bet your questions will be very similar to other artists' questions, so could you help me video? And so she came out, and I showed her how to set up, you know, an area for a mural, what I, you know, how I pitch a business, how I, I literally took her to the paint store and showed her, like, introduced her to the owners of the paint, the local paint store, and where I buy paint, and what kind of paint to buy for this, and that, and exterior, and, and interior, and she videoed the whole thing, and so she helped me so much throughout that process, and then she helped me so much that I was like, okay, um, I want to pay her back, is basically what I was kind of thinking, too even though she insisted that she was getting a lot out of it as well, I was like, no, like, um, can you come help me finish this mural and I'll pay you whatever rate. And she's like, yeah. So I then hired her, <laughs> like not, I don't even think it was maybe a week later to when I finished it. And so she helped me finish it and I gave her some lessons while we were there and it was great. And since then I've hired her for a couple other things and we're going to work on a mural this summer and just all that stuff. So that's a really, really good example of how you could reach out to an artist in your area and it be beneficial for both of you, you know, because a lot of people, first off, you're scared to reach out to someone who's higher up than you. And I actually have <laughs> a... Um, an example of that, of myself, reach, about, I'm about to reach out to an artist who is higher up than me, and yeah, uh, I'll just talk about that in a second, but I want to talk about another one, so Christy Martin, another example, so Christy had sent me a message, I don't know, a couple years ago, it's like, hey, I love your art, this is my art, if you have, if you want to recommend me, um, I'd love to, I was like, okay, yeah, sure, and then she joined the Artist Academy, so um, in this example, she had joined before I had really officially met her. And with Meg, I had met Meg and then, and then Meg became an Arts Academy member. So it could happen either way. And which is why I wanted to use this example because they're very different. And Christy was like, hey, like, I really want to do wings. Like, that's, I really want to do wings. Can you please, you know, get me out on a, uh, a project, any project that you have coming up that I might be of service to? to you or I don't think she said service to you but uh, that I could help you and it, it, it would be free and I was like okay sure yeah so I scheduled her out it was like I was scheduled out like three months at the time so this past summer I had her come out and we painted some giant owl wings at a local brewery and it was great I she helped and she got to she got a good feel of what it was like to paint wings and um, and then I hired her on another project. I hired her, which like paid her. So for the first time, I didn't pay her. She just came out to learn. And the second one, I being the person that I am, I always want to like, I'm, I'm all about balance, call it the Libra in me or whatever. But if someone helps me, I'm immediately trying, starting to think of ways to help them immediately. And so I hired her later for these large butterfly wings and I paid her for it. And so she has more than made up for the amount that she's put into the Artist Academy and hopefully she's learned quite a bit. And she's actually inspired these recent tutorials that I've been doing all about color theory inside of the Artist Academy. That's a different story. But now we're friends and I, <laughs> we actually just texted last night and we're, we're like work friends. 
And so that's two examples of ways you could reach out to people. And really, I don't know that I've had anybody that has reached out and asked to help on something and I've said no. I don't think. I'm trying to think of like, no, I, I don't think so. Anybody that's reach, reaches out to me and wants to help out for free just to learn, I'm like, yeah, sure, come on. And those two stand out because they're two, I don't know if they're the only two recently. That I, no, surely not. But um, they, they just, their stories stand out to me because they, they offered nothing. Or sorry, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> they didn't offer nothing. They, uh, they asked for it for free. So they were offering their services and in return of, I would pay them nothing. That, that, that's what I mean. So they offered that and all they wanted is just to learn. And then in turn, I ended up hiring them and now they're part of the Arts Academy. And now we work together pretty, pretty regularly. I think we, I hire them or they, we, or we work together maybe once a quarter, I'd say. So, okay. So how do you reach out to people. Okay. So everybody has that, you know, your favorite artists that you have on Instagram, but they're probably not anywhere near you. Right. So I want to challenge you guys. Like I have challenged the Arts Academy members and sorry, the Arts Academy advanced members and to reach out to somebody who is in your area. And if you're in a small town, you know, maybe you do the next town over or the next bit, next big town over, but find an artist in your area and just reach out to them and off, offer offer a hand because you just never know what can come from that. And especially as the summer is coming, I get a lot busier this summer. So maybe just say, you know, if you don't have anything now, I would love to, you know, help you during your busy season once things get busy to take a little bit off your plate or something, you know, because I usually hire a lot more people in the summer and for window painting. Those are like two of my peak times. So current Artist Academy students, just wait for the summer. <laughs> it's about to get crazy here in a couple months or really the spring, like when things are starting to warm up and we're able to do exterior murals again. So for example, I am about to reach out to a local artist here in the area. Her name is Susan Sommer. Susan Sommer's Luarca. She just got married like me, <laughs> or she didn't just get married, but she extended her name like me. It was Susan Sommer. Now it's Susan Sommer's Luarca. I am, however, cha- starting, sorry, I am, however, keeping my last name, Andrea Earhart, for business purposes because Andrea Earhart Sanders is a mouthful. It's way too long and I'm not doing that. (laughs) Like it's just, my name is long enough as it is when I sign it at the bottom. So I'm just keeping it like Andrea Earhart and then um, I, I go by Sanders, you know, by for friends and family and all that. But for business reasons, I'm keeping it Andrea Earhart. That was a little tangent. That was a little off subject. Anyway, it's my first day back. Give me a break. Okay. So I am about to reach out to Susan Summer. She is a big deal. <laughs> She's done a lot of murals in this area. She's an accomplished artist. She's painted for the Olympics. <laughs> like, she is a big deal. And she lives in Springfield, Missouri. <laughs> and so she's one, one of the artists that I think could maybe help me out in some way. I just have no idea. I really have just wanted to meet her for some time now. And so... My way of doing things is you start first by complimenting them. Like, and if you're in the Arts Academy, you're going to get literal, literal screenshots of exact, my exact message to her and, and other people and how I get artists on the podcast and all of that. But basically, I'm just going to explain how I do it for you podcast listeners, and that way you can kind of make it your own. First, start by complimenting them. The first thing I do is, hello, Susan, blah, blah, blah. I am a big fan of your work. Or hello, Brooke Cormier. Or hello, Maria Brophy. Or (laughs) hello, whoever. Hi, I'm a big fan. And tell them why you like it. So I have kind of just like a standard greeting for artists that I that I use to reach out. However, I change it for everyone. And I make sure that they know that I'm looking at their art. Like, I love the blues that you use, or I love the landscape paintings or your equestrian paintings in Susan Summers' case. Uh, that's what I'm going to say to her. Susan Summers, she's an equestrian artist and it just she does a lot, of, a lot of horses and it's just beautiful. It's stupid. I'm so jealous. <laughs> but I use that jealousy as, um, oh, what's the word? Um, 
motivation. Yeah. So, and so then you go by saying why you're reaching out. So for Susan's case, I am actually going to suggest that she be on the podcast. So hopefully in the next couple uh, episodes, you'll see Susan Summers on there and hopefully we'll meet. So, and with me, the podcast is kind of just like my way of networking every single week for, with artists, whether in my area or ones that I want to meet on Instagram or whatever. So like me, for me telling you to network, it's not just me telling you what to do. It's me showing you what I'm already doing. And if I'm doing it, it's because it's working and good things are coming of it. And a lot of times you never know. Sometimes you have to reach out to 10 artists and then, you know, you get a job from one of them or you become friends with one of them. And But it takes, you know, reaching out to a couple people just to kind of see. And so, yeah, I'm going to reach out to Susan Summers. Ah! <laughs> I'm like excited and kind of nervous, which is what I hope you have too. I hope you're a little nervous and I hope you're really excited as well. Uh, just to meet these people because it's just, there's so much that can come from people who have been there before you and have been there longer than you she's been doing it way longer than me like way longer I'd say maybe at least 10 years longer which is like I said earlier anybody 10 years in their career is probably doing pretty well so I'm going to reach out to her about trying to be on the podcast and I'm just going to say you know tell her my reach um yeah, maybe make it noted that I have 50,000 Instagram followers. That way, you know, that could be good promotion for her because really that that 50K under my name right now, it, it does a lot. And uh, podcast downloads as well, that does a lot. And that's how I get big name people like Maria Brophy and all of these people and Courtney Montague, that, which she's so big and just all these people on the podcast. It's just kind of like share your credentials and the least egotistical way, you know, be like, Hey, you know, I've painted for this and this such and such, and this is this blah, blah, blah. And I would love to learn from you. And what I say at the, almost at the end of every podcast email is something, something like, um, you know, I, I help teach artists or I help show artists that being a full-time artist is completely possible. And I think you would be an inspiring example. So again, tooting their horn a little bit. <laughs> you like to be complimented. I like to be complimented. The people you are reaching out to like to be complimented. Don't overdo it, but let them know that you really, really like them. And trust me, it goes a long way. Even with me, when, when people are like, hi, like, like I, I love your stuff. Like, and if they go on and on about it, if they're a super fan, I go, I go further. Like if they're like posting my art and taking pictures with my street art, like it'll come back to you. So be complimentary, be nice. Show them, tell them why you would like to reach out to them. Maybe, you know, tell them what you can do for them. And whether it's like you offering up free work, uh, trade skills, trade information, um, just anything, but keep it short, okay? And I'm talking like, if you're, if you're writing three paragraphs, it's too long, like way too long. Keep it really short. I'd say two paragraphs is like the absolute most you could ever write. Keep it to one if you can. Something short. Mainly because when something comes in your inbox from somebody you don't know, people don't want to read a giant paragraph, or sorry, a giant novel from an artist they don't know. Okay, wait, I think I, I, I butchered that metaphor. People don't want to read a book from an author that they don't know, typically. I don't know. Okay, it's Monday. <laughs> um... So there are several podcast guests that I've had to email twice, and they're really thankful that I had. Um, however, there have been a couple of people who have canceled on me last minute, twice, and they'll never get an email again. <laughs> but there are some people who, you know, are just busy. And they, if, you know, if they ignore your first email, it's because they probably saw it thought about it and then got distracted so you, you emailing them again shows them that hey you know you really want them on your podcast or for your if you really want to meet them you know or you really have some value that you can give to them and you really want to meet them <laughs> and so you know just and a way to go about that is hey you do, I mean you don't say hey like I you forgot my email you say hey I know you're busy give them an out because if they're a big time artist they are busy like give them some grace and you, you know how artists are <laughs> not a lot of them are business minded and so just be like hey I, I know you're busy um I just wanted to make sure that you got my last email let me know if you're available 
that's it. You know, like, don't be hateful. Just be like, hey, I know, I know you're busy. No big deal. But I really want to meet you. And I'm not going to give up until I do. <laughs> don't say that. But like, give that vibe. And then if they don't email again, wait a couple weeks and email again. And then I'd say the third time, maybe like, okay, maybe they just don't like you. <laughs> no, I'm just totally kidding. Okay. But yeah, just reach out and see what happens. So again, if you're in the Artist Academy, you get to look inside my outbox and see exactly how I reach out to artists here locally and for the podcast. I am almost a literal open book for you guys. You can see my exact wording for reaching out to artists, businesses, any kind of promotion. I give you guys everything. And it's funny because some students, when especially students who don't really have a lot of time and they're super busy, they'll literally copy and paste exactly what I'm saying and send it to people. And that stuff works. With emails, like I show them exactly like the emails that I send to my customers. They're like, okay, yep, looks good. And they'll copy and paste and put their links in it and send it. And I'm like, great, yeah, whatever. This is what it's for. <laughs> However, a lot of people, um, they'll use it as kind of a guideline and change it up to kind of fit your own style but the I mean the the scripts that I'm giving you are ones that I have worked on and also ones that I've ran by my husband (laughs) my husband (laughs) who is uh, really savvy with business and so he helps me with a, a lot of my emails that I now have perfected and just especially with I mean he's the one who really taught me how to just keep it short he's like people don't want to people don't care Get, until they have a reason to care until they like you they don't care so keep it short bug them um, tell them give them a compliment tell them how you can help them and yeah there you go reach out to other artists and you just you just never know what comes from it and kind of like just like I was thinking about this whole thing you just you never know you could get a friend um you could get a referral for a job you could get information you know it just you never know reach out to artists that is the assignment for the week and I'm just gonna stop recording now because I just I don't know my brain is not here so I'm gonna wait a day and then maybe record some more podcasts solo podcasts episodes tomorrow or something (laughs) it's not today so today I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my time off kind of ish and (laughs) I will see you guys later okay oh wait oh and at the end um I oh wait I completely forgot I was gonna include this okay so one of my (laughs) um one of my favorite ways to network is to do the live painting at charity events I'm telling you guys it is an underutilized thing people love it it is a win-win um you so which is basically you do live painting at a charity event they auction it off and it's actually like they pay for the print that you use or the materials or whatever and it's no cost to you you go up there you're an artist in a field of people who have money and usually no other artists are there so you are front and center stage which is how I like to be when I'm networking I don't like to go to these places where there's a bunch of different artists and I'm competing for attention I like to be in a room where I am the only artist and I get all the attention think of it like that when, when you're networking in large groups too So I have put together a training for exactly what live painting is at what a charity event is, how to get into it, how to do the whole thing. And there is a link in the notes. So all you got, all you do is if you're listening on Apple podcasts and you go and you look at the, like the episode, you go to details and you can see it in there. It's at the very bottom. And it's like Andrea Hart, blah, 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 slash live painting. I don't want to say it because it's, it's a long link. And also, I have included, you know that amazing photographer that I was talking about that I met in Antarctica that I'm going to be using his photos? <laughs> I also included a link to his website. He does not give you permission to do it. So please do not, you know, just take his photos. Don't do that. However, I just, I wanted to show you guys some of this amazing photographer's just photos of wildlife and landscape they're amazing it's just it's so amazing and I I I wanted to include that it's also in the links if you go to details it's in the notes uh it's hobbsphotos.com his name is Jared Hobbs and he's just amazing and I hope by looking at that you will get inspired to do some awesome paintings but again don't take his because that's illegal so um yeah let me know if you guys want a reference photo bank in the artist academy Also, if you leave a review of this podcast and then send it to me, I will give you a shout out on my Instagram of over 50,000 and that's it. Okay, goodbye. This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. 
with weekly trainings that include step-by-step -step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly <laughs> and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. If you review our podcast and send a screenshot of that review to me on Instagram, I am at art by Andrea Earhart. I will then promote your art on my story and tag you as a little thank you for helping me grow this podcast and our Artist Academy community. I have a reach of over 50,000 on Instagram. So this is a little help me to help you incentive. Also, if you ever want your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy to check out the schedule every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you next week.